So hello everyone and welcome to my channel, The Future is Golden. And today I want to talk about something that has kind of been on a lot of people's minds. Um, I do hear this topic brought up a lot. And the topic is being genetically mixed is not the same as having a mixed phenotype. So in this space in YouTube where we discuss a lot of issues related to being mixed race, especially mixed between, you know, African or black and other races. Um, some of these topics come up and people kind of get sidetracked. So when I'm talking about genetically mixed, you can be genetically mixed with anything. You can be, you know, 10% European, 50% European, 60% Asian, 20% Puerto Rican, you know, all of these different mixtures are valid mixtures, okay? That's being genetically mixed. However, a mixed phenotype is one that society recognizes as mixed. And when you're talking about discrimination or social treatment or persecution or privilege, a lot of the time you're talking about having a mixed phenotype. So being genetically mixed, it really is an experience that involves your internal identity a lot of the time because you can be genetically mixed and you may be mistaken as fully black, you may be mistaken as fully white, or you could even be mistaken as another race. But that involves your internal identity. It also can involve your family upbringing and how that impacts your cultural identity and you know how that's based on your environment that's your identity per se right but having a mixed phenotype that's really how society perceives you the physiology of race um sometimes in this space i think people can conflate and obscure the two issues and they're both very valid types of issues, but they're two different conversations, really. So um, your internal identity, I mean, basically, what do you think of yourself as? You know, do you think of yourself as only black? You can be a mixed person and think that, okay, I'm only black. You can feel like strongly, very strongly, I'm mixed. You know, I'm either mixed race, I'm biracial. Um, some people even say I may be mulatto or you know, um, mestizo, you know, they may have a very strong um, mixed race identity. Other people will just say maybe that they're just white. I'm white. I have a little bit of black ancestry, but I'm basically a white person. You know, my family just keeps it a secret or, um, you know, I have a, a little Asian ancestry, but I just claim black. You know, there's a lot of different variations, but that's your personal internal identity, what you think of yourself, how you view race based on what you've experienced in your life and also based on your culture, right? So if you are very fixed in black culture, you may not feel like it's important to talk about being mixed, you know, and there's no one, there's no one stopping you from being within black culture and only representing black culture. So on this channel, you will never hear me shame someone for identifying as white or black or mixed. That's really their decision because it has a lot, there are a lot of factors involved in why people develop their internal identity. And, you know, I'm not here to really brainwash people just to really discuss the issues. But, um, there's a lot of reasons why someone who is mixed race with any type of black or sub-Saharan African ancestry will choose to say that they're black. And of course, historically in the United States, we all know about the one drop rule. We all know about the social impact of everyone claiming a black or African American identity. So we don't have to keep uh, covering the same topics each time, but What's important to note is that there are a lot of people who are uncomfortable claiming that they're mixed race because somehow it's become an insult to being African-American to claim mixed race, which is really another discussion altogether, but it's worth 
bringing up that that impacts how people identify. So a lot of the time, what you'll hear people say is I'm biracial, but I consider myself to be black. So what they're actually doing is they're claiming two identities, right? Because it's not socially acceptable to just claim one because a lot of black people are going to say, well, you're not really black, right? And then you're going to also have a lot of mixed people saying, um, you know, you should just claim mixed. You're mixed. Why are you claiming black? You know, so there is a little bit of a struggle and you will get people, especially celebrities who will say, you know, I'm these different races, but I'm proudly black, you know. So basically they're covering their tracks and claiming all the races. And um, <laughs> we should we should be aware of that. Um, the next topic is your family upbringing. Um, you can you can grow up with uh, a white mother or uh, a black mother and an Asian mother and they can raise you or try to raise you as a black person. They can try to raise you as a mixed person. You'll even have some parents trying to just claim you as their culture. So it's maybe a little bit more rare, but you do have white parents who do raise their mixed race children as white, or they do try to bring them up believing that they don't have a race or they don't discuss race whatsoever. So those issues do come up as well. And of course, with raising your child as a specific race, you're also raising them with a cultural identity. So, I mean, your parent can be Irish, they can be Italian, they can be Russian. All of these are cultural identities. And if you are a mixed race, you're actually a mix of two cultures. Sometimes you will only be immersed in one culture. Um, but there are some fortunate mixed race people who are immersed in both cultures, or if they're more than one culture, all of the different cultures that they're a part of. And that's really the goal for mixed race children to be immersed in all of their cultures instead of just having them identify as only one culture. Um, so when I was talking about how society perceives you, um, that really gets into traits. So what are some of the traits associated with the different races? And of course, each of the races has unique characteristics associated with their phenotype. So for example, you know, Asian people have, you know, or I, at least I should say like Korean, Chinese, Japanese, you know, the fox eye, you know, the ivory skin tone, uh, silky black hair, although sometimes, you know, they might have curly hair, but often they will have silky black hair, you know, in terms of black people often associate that with a uh, chocolatey brown skin tone, ebony skin tones, very, very kinky, curly hair, you know, um, what I like to call a square nose, you know, like a little squarish kind of nose or roundish nose, you know, fuller lips, um, often high cheekbones, you know, um, they will usually have a smaller brow. So their brow line is not as pronounced, you know, and then when you look at someone Caucasian, you'll notice a very pronounced brow, often with more deep set eyes, you know, and then a kind of look, looks like a straight nose or, you know, people call it an aquiline nose, maybe thinner lips. Um, so there are some differences between the different races. And what happens is when you are a mixed person and you have these different characteristics because you're mixed race, you know, people sometimes can be confused as to what you are. And whenever there's any confusion, sometimes you'll be treated differently for that. Like, what exactly are you? You know, there are, you know, like negative connotations to not having um, a classic phenotype of one particular race. Um, but I also want to talk about how when your identity matches how society perceives you, there's very little internal conflict. So when you feel different than what you're perceived as, Sometimes that can be a problem, <laughs> okay? And, I, you know, maybe you can think of, like, someone like Rachel Dolezal who felt like, oh, I'm a black woman, you know? Um, but if society were to look at her in her natural state, they would say, well, you're not black, you know, you're a white woman. So these are the types of issues that, you know, maybe your identity that you're having doesn't match how society perceives you. And this can happen with mixed race people too. Some mixed race people... Um, feel like they look like a different race. They feel like they don't look, quote unquote, 
stereotypically mixed. And they continue to bring up the topic of being, you know, treated as, you know, a monoracial person, a white person, an Asian person. Um, maybe a Mexican or Latino person, a black person. They feel like people aren't noticing that they're mixed. And that poses a challenge for them because they, um, their internal identity is that of a mixed person. But yet and still, you know, you have to remember that that's a different conversation than how society will treat you as a mixed person. So Again, sometimes when we talk about mixed race issues, we like to talk about discrimination of mixed race people. We like to talk about privilege. We like to talk about, uh, you know, identity, like just overall what names people will view us as. So right away, someone can see an, an Asian person and say, that person's Asian. Right away, someone can see a white person and say, that person's white. But when it comes to mixed race people, what term are they using? Often there is no term or there's a jumble of different terms that no one can agree on. So this is one of the issues that mixed race people face too, not necessarily having a set identity. And in addition to, you know, experiencing the different types of discrimination, privilege, persecution, stereotypes, biases that they face for their appearance. So in closing, the reality is that being, you know, multi-ethnic or mixed race poses unique challenges for people's identity. And it also poses unique discussions about discrimination that really need to be explored more in the space. That's why these spaces are important. And I hope that people will continue to try to preserve this space moving forward and push harder for conversations. Don't allow yourself to have these conversations be derailed or to devolve into um, discussions that have nothing to do with mixed race issues. But I'm really hoping that we can push forward and have more of these discussions. And thank you for watching my channel. Please like subscribe and share. Also leave a comment below and let me know what you think in terms of how this issue affects you. Looking mixed race versus being genetically mixed. Okay, thanks.